Hi, how's it going? My name's David and I have an Etsy store. I sell digital products, specifically ones made in Microsoft Excel. I've had some success with my store, but I need to increase my inventory. So today I'm going to take you through my process to make a digital Etsy product. We're going to go through modeling the idea, writing the logic, stylizing the workbook, and then posting and branding the product. It could help to have some Etsy or Excel knowledge before starting this video, but it's by no means necessary. Now let's get started. We're making an exercise tracker that mimics the GitHub contribution grid. The inspiration for this is the contribution grid on any GitHub profile. The idea is that we're going to rob and duplicate that GitHub grid into an Excel dashboard so that we can track things like exercise or other non-coding related activities. We're then going to take that beautiful dashboard and we're going to sell it on Etsy as a digital product. I think we're going to be marketing the first version of this GitHub style dashboard as a physical exercise tracker. I myself have been trying to do more push-ups in my daily life, but I've been tracking them on a calendar on a piece of paper. So ideally, this tracker is going to replace that piece of paper for me and I'll be the first user. The goal is that we're going to be able to track any kind of exercise in one vertical user input table. That table is then going to automatically create a dynamic GitHub grid next to it, and we're going to be able to filter that grid by the kind of exercise that we want to see. So let's go see how GitHub does it so that we don't miss anything when we go to replicate it in Excel. This right here is my personal GitHub, and the thing that we're looking to duplicate is the contribution grid right here. As we can see, there are a bunch of little dots. That's one dot per day in the year. In each column, we've got seven rows representing each day of the week. And then we've got 52 columns representing each week in the year. On the left-hand side, we've got the names of three of the days. We might wanna show each name of the day in our version. And up top, we've got a dynamic list that follows our columns of each month in the year. Down below the grid, We've got a list of the yearly contribution activity broken down by, uh, by repo. So I think down here, we're going to do a list of each month's activity broken down by exercise type. Thousands of hours have been poured into making this beautifully designed contribution grid. So the proof of concept is there. We know that people like this design and that it works. I find whenever I'm going to make a new Etsy product and it's based on an existing design like the GitHub contribution grid, it's good to go take a look at the existing design and see if you can figure out why certain aspects of it are laid out as they are. Now that we've had a look at the source, we're going to go ahead and go into Excel and start the basic layout. The first thing that we do when we're making a new product is get organized and get an idea of how the end result is going to be laid out and how it's going to look. We know that we need seven rows and 52 columns, but in addition to that, we need a row above our grid to hold the names of the months and a column to the left to hold the names of the days. I'm gonna go ahead and do a full border around our grid so that we've got extra space. First things first, I'm going to select 52 columns by clicking, dragging, and you can see up by my cursor, we have 52C, 52 columns selected. I'm then going to reformat the column width down to 20 pixels because the default row height in Excel is 20. So now we've got 20 pixel by 20 pixel squares for our grid. We're selecting nine because we're going to have a border around our, uh, our grid. And then we're going to select our 54 columns so that we can have a border around the left and right of the grid. Just throw a border on there and select our seven by 52 and put a border around that. Now let's flip back to GitHub. I think we're going to design a light mode style for Excel because most users are going to be using a light mode in Excel anyways, as that's the default. So if we zoom in, you can see we've got these squares and then a border around the squares that blends in with the background. So if our background is going to be white, we need the border around the squares to be white and the squares to be not white. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the border. Already, um, we've got a little grid that sort of looks like the grid that we're looking to emulate. 
Now, we have a rough idea of what the grid is going to look like, so we need to assign a day of the year to each of these squares. Now, instead of putting our days of the week in our existing display grid, we're going to duplicate the display grid and put our days of the week in the duplicate so that we can reference them easily. This is going to keep our formulas very readable and isn't going to expand the size of the notebook to a point where it would be an issue. So now we've got two identical grids, one of which is going to contain the day that a cell references to, and then one which is going to contain our heat map just like on GitHub. So let's start off by putting each day of the year in these 52 times 7 cells. So the first thing that we need is a reference of what day it is today. We then need to identify what day of the week today is. And we're going to go ahead and label our data just to stay nice and organized. And then with a little bit of ifs magic and our reference values, as well as row labeling, we are able to start our date range with the first column here. Now the good news is after finishing off with our long if statement, the rest of these values are very easy to fill in. We go the value directly to the left minus seven days. And we should see all the correct values here, the 20th to the 19th, 13th to the 12th and the 6th to the 5th. So now we can go ahead and fill the rest of these days in. And we've got one year's worth of dates, the 26th of November here to the 28th last year. We now have 364 dates available and we can find out how many exercises we did on each date. Now that we've duplicated our data and we've identified the days that are going to be shown in our grid, we need to create a user input table. User input tables are a pretty key aspect when creating a product that's going to be consumed on Etsy. It's got to be simple enough to use that anybody without Excel experience could use your product, but comprehensive enough that that simple user input is going to be able to power your entire dashboard. So let's flip back to Excel and get started on that. Now let's put in some dummy data to get started. Specifically, let's say that yesterday I did two sessions of push-ups with 20 push-ups each. And then today we did a single session of 40 push-ups. We'll start off with the basic summing function and then we're going to mix in our exercise filtering. Now we want to display the number of repetitions that I did each day in these cells. So what we're going to do is a sum ifs function. So we're going to go ahead and sum up column D and we're going to sum it by column B and our criteria is going to be the date that corresponds to our display graph here. So this grid cell here corresponds to this grid cell. We can press enter and drag them up and across. We should see our two days of 40 push-ups, 40 push-ups and 40 push-ups. Now you may be wondering, David, you made a table, but you did not use table references here. You referenced the whole entire Excel column. There's definitely some efficiency lost there, uh, specifically in readability. But what we gain out of that is the possibility to have this sheet remain compliant for Google Sheets so that we can easily import this workbook into Google Sheets and have our end users use Google Sheets or Excel, whichever they prefer. Google Sheets doesn't support table references and the automatic conversion of your formulas from the Microsoft Excel table references to the Google Sheet references is not very good. So to avoid that, we're just going to reference the columns as a whole. Luckily, our end users aren't going to be actually going into these formulas, ideally. It's just a little bit more difficult when it comes to readability for us while we're developing this worksheet. Now that we've got the basic summing function in here, let's put in the exercise filters. So we're going to add in a bit more dummy data here, including some sit-ups. Our grid cell here is now at 240, but we don't actually want to see 240 if I'm only looking at push-ups. First things first, we need a unique list of the exercises that I've done. I'm going to go ahead and make a new sheet here so that we can have a separate references sheet. Now we've got a unique array that's got only our exercise types. 
And now if we go ahead and add an extra exercise to this, for instance, burpees, I think that's how you spell them, we'll see burpees appears in our new array formula here. So let's add a drop down for our filter first so that we know what we're going to reference. Now we need to adjust our formula here to filter down these lists by the exercise name that's selected. Now we should see the same results as we haven't applied a filter, but if we filter for just push-ups, we can see this number changed from 240 to just 40. If we switch it to sit-ups, we can see we did 200 sit-ups. Good job us. And there we are. Our grid is now filterable and we can leave the uh, user input table as it is. Now we've completed the summing function and we've got a basic skeleton of the report that we're going to publish. Next, we need to stylize and make it look actually good, like a product somebody would want to buy. But we're gonna save that for the next video. See you then.